Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. Era is away today, um, and she's going to be so sad because we're talking about art today. And uh, <laughs> but we're going to have some fun. Kelly Schumacher in studio today with On You Stay Liturgical Arts, and she has a fun opportunity, a learning opportunity um, for folks here in the St. Louis area. And uh, Kelly, it is always good to chat with you. Thanks for coming over and spending some time in the studio with me. Thanks, Andy. As always, it is so great to be here. So Agnus Dei Liturgical Arts, for our listeners who maybe have never heard of Agnus Dei Liturgical Arts, which is nearly impossible if you listen to KFUO, but um, tell us a little bit about Agnus Dei Arts. Yeah, um, Agnus Dei Arts, um, it is a service that I provide and my family provides to um, have religious art for churches and for homes um, in the form of paintings, prints, um, greeting cards, Um, speaking, but my goals are to simply educate the church on classical religious art that has been um, an important part of our faith through the centuries and to carry that tradition on into today. And you mentioned several, is it media? Media. Is that, is that the way I'm not a, I'm not a true artist. So, um, so you do um, drawing, painting, uh, Mainly drawing and painting, okay. and then, um, but there's different. Um, you know, oil is the main, mm-hmm. the main one that I use. But um, I've done book illustration and all those, all those kind of things too. But then, uh, people usually like to purchase the prints and the cards for their homes or as gifts. And today, what we get to talk about is watercolor. Yes. Uh, which I don't know. Maybe lots of kids think that uh, watercolor is super fun. Maybe adults think watercolor is super fun. I want to go back to w- w- early days of watercolor for you. What do you remember your first experience with watercolor? Yeah. Um, at least I remember my dad really trying to get me to paint a bowl of fruit in watercolor, and um, I wanted to paint dolphins instead. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I, I'm really glad though that he real that he um I mean he even got me like a board and he taped the watercolor paper to the board and told me to draw out the still life and even though I did not want to do it and I really didn't do a good job I am so glad that he took the initiative and the fact that he just said you're gonna learn how to do this and that was a lesson that stayed with me as a child and as a teacher. I put my students through the same <laughs> same thing, um, but that would be my my first experience. I really remember um, that, as I can tell, it it had an impact and it's influenced how I teach today. Did you hear that, Dad Schumacher? That uh, that 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 did pay off. So she's appreciative, even though she didn't want to paint the fruit at the time and wanted to paint dolphins, uh, and we didn't even didn't like give away how old you were at this time. Do you remember? Like oh how my old goodness. you were? I think been? I was first or second grade. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can relate to that then. We have a first grader. Well yeah. finishing up first grade uh this week. And um uh, so what what have you grown to appreciate or what have you grown to like about watercolor? Absolutely. Well I was trained as an oil painter mm-hmm. and um I've never really uh, been drawn towards watercolor. I mean, it was pretty much my dad really tried to teach me and that didn't really go. That kind of fell on the ground. <laughs> um, and he would always kind of point out watercolors and I'd be like, okay, that looks nice. But I think I tried a few times and I just, it was a, it was a hot mess. Like it just couldn't figure it out. And then, um, I think, I, and then I, as I said, I was trained as an oil painter and then I wanted to take a watercolor class as a kind of like a continuing education to brush up on my skills. Uh, oh, 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 that uh, pun, good thing you got it. <laughs> um, to brush up on my skills. And I was taking this class at a Merrimack and I decided to look for some books. And then I found this book called Light Up Your Watercolors. And it, the way that they broke down painting and watercolors was very similar to the process of oil painting. And I then... St- took a lot of time to actually illustrated some children's books based off of these methods. But turns out I just needed the right method in order to enjoy watercolor and in order to teach it. So And so now you are teaching watercolor as well and some opportunities for folks here in the St. Louis area to learn watercolor. 
Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I've been uh, teaching um, for a few years now, and um, I do teach um, watercolor and drawing and just some of the basics. And then I'm planning on a watercolor six week class um, at St. Paul's de Pair, which I. Yeah, we need to work on advertising that. That's a good point. So, <laughs> so a six week class, and what would you learn in? A, what would I learn in a six week class? Watercolor, right? Right. Um, well, the thing is, is uh, I would, since we're not doing a pre drawing class, I would teach some methods um, with gridding to help get a good drawing. But my plan was to just teach um, how to paint flowers um, with watercolor. Um, from photographs. That's kind of what I want to teach um, because it's beautiful outside. And I mean, who doesn't like beautiful leaves and watercolors and flowers? And um, with these methods of drawing, and then I think it's about a six-step process that I teach, give or take, um, depending on what the needs of the painting are. Um, it's something that can be taught and replicated fairly easily so that my students Yes, I'm going to walk them through the steps, but if they want to work on their own projects in their own time, mm -hmm. they then feel like they have a method to accomplish their goals. Any skills or prerequisites one would need to have before coming to a class with On You Stay Yards? Um, that's a good question. A, a lot of it, I think, is patience <laughs> um, and also the ability to use a ruler. <laughs> Those are two okay. things that are are really going to help make it easier if I'm teaching gridding or something like that. But um, I find that I can teach anything if it's really an attitude thing, is if the child or adult has the willingness to learn, mm -hmm. um, I can teach them pretty much anything. Um, but that's that's always kind of the, the tricky factor. But even because <laughs> I can try to instill in them the desire to learn, um, but that's that's a bit harder. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so, so coming with a, a willing attitude and interest in in learning and the ability to use a ruler. Got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, class is for adults for children. Who who has the opportunity to to learn watercolor with yeah, you? Yeah, there's well, there's definitely a mix. Um, my classes are. I try to actually open them up to all ages. Um, because sometimes you get these really studious four-year-olds, which I was one of them. <laughs> um, but I would say anything under four is probably a little bit difficult mm -hmm. um, with these classes. But, you know, sometimes these, you know, and, but, you know, then you sometimes meet people that are, you know, teenagers that can't sit still for more than 25 minutes, too. So I'm always a big fan of um, encouraging Longer using art class even as a way to encourage promoting longer attention spans because I, um, I was doing a lot of reading and reading and audiobooks and psychology and there's this book called uh, Deep Work and there's several books that are just on how um, our world and technology don't promote long term focus and long term concentration mm -hmm. and I'm a big believer in using art to promote longer term focus. Um, in children and in adults. We could all use that. I agree. <laughs> we're, we're all focused on reading bullet points rather than paragraphs or pages. And uh, it's just, a, I think, a consequence of, of uh, our culture and, and where we are today. So any opportunity to, to slow down and spend some time with some longer focus. Great idea. So how do we find information about uh, the watercolor classes and how to learn watercolor with you? Sure. Um, well, I do have my newsletter um, with Aniste Liturgical Arts. I haven't listed this on my website, um, but if you simply, you can just contact me on my Aniste Arts website. There's a, I think there's like a teaching or lessons mm -hmm. um, to ex express interest. Um, I'm also available on Facebook. You know, just shoot me a message on Facebook. Um, my email is liturgicalartist at gmail.com, L-I-T-U-R-G-I-C-A-L-A-R-T-I-S-T <laughs> at gmail.com. So. Very good. And we'll provide a link to the website as well with the program notes today so that they can uh, find, one, your website and all the great resources and the beautiful art that you have there, but also express some interest in uh, joining one of your art classes. Do you have an idea, a time frame of when classes might be available this year? Yes. Um, we're going to be looking at the last two weeks in June and all of July. Um, and I'm thinking about four to six o'clock, you know, so it's not 
too late or mm-hmm. too early. Um, but giving because st- they're group lessons, um, a two hour time limit would be really mm-hmm. nice. Um, that way, people feel like they have enough time to get prepped, get into the lesson, and clean up and not feel rushed. That's sure. Important. What's cleanup like for watercolor compared to oil? Easy. <laughs> Much easier. <laughs> Much easier. All you have to do is rinse your brushes out in soap and water, and you're done. Yes, I, I saw your great tip on Facebook the other day when it comes to. Uh, watercolor painting that you make sure that your drinking water is separate yes. <laughs> with a lid on it uh, as opposed to your uh, your brush water so that uh, you're not drinking your brush water. Yeah, that's gross. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Are you speaking from experience? You know what? I think I one time had a cup of coffee and I was oil painting and... <laughs> Yeah, we're going to just leave it at that. Okay. And definitely do not, never, never, never do that. Solvents, do not. No. 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 <laughs> I didn't do that, but you don't want to do that. You can learn watercolor this summer with Kelly Schumacher at On You Stay Liturgical Arts. And that's, uh, you're, you're planning on that taking place at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in De Pere. Yes. Coming up this summer, the end of June through all of July. You can find, uh, you can reach out to Kelly at On You Stay E arts.com you can uh, express interest there on the website on the that website and kelly it is always a pleasure to talk with you to learn more about art i feel always enlightened after our conversations learn something more about art it sounds like a fantastic opportunity uh anything else do you want to point us to just on you stay arts.com yeah, that's good enough um i'm pretty responsive so don't Very feel good. free to message me there absolutely kelly schumacher on you stay liturgical arts thanks for being my guest on the coffee hour Thank you so much, Andy. It was great. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support The Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you. Anytime. Anywhere.